a long card advantage, kind of eking things out sort of play, and uh, Ethan... Ethan's playing lands by the looks of it. I saw Mox Diamond and there's the Dark Depths. Alright, we're going to be here for a bit. Yeah, <laughs> and an Urborg, so <coughs> there's some added benefit there. Excellent. Is that a him? I think that's a him on the right behind the Dark Depths. It could be. I can't quite see it myself, but I mean, I and imagine if it is, we'll be finding out very quickly. And uh, Wasteland. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they're off. Jukabog. Yep, him. There it is. I wonder what he's going to do. Now, you know, like, turn two him is pretty good. Turn one him is insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's... You know, Je Jeffrey could easily find himself just all of a sudden, oh, I don't have lands, you know? Yeah. Fun game of magic. So, it got one off, and... And let's see what Ooh. it was. Uh, a little bit of glare there, so I'm not yeah. too sure what he pitched. It looks like a land and a bitter blossom. Okay. So, ah, uh, wasteland. Does he want to go for the lock early game? It'll yeah, it's gonna be interesting. You know, I've haven't seen how this particular matchup plays out. Um, my experience with lands is, uh, you know, I've played Burn in Legacy, and that's kind of just like just kill them before they do their stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. generally you see life from the loam and you go, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm pretty much losing at this point. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it'll be neat for me to kind of see the the different things that lands do when they're not trying to just be dead on, like, <laughs> turn three or four, you know? Because Jeffrey's deck definitely not a uh, get you dead on turn three or four. And, yeah. and, and I have to feel that probably at least game one, I feel like the lands deck is probably favored. Yeah. It kind of it's a bit more balanced mm -hmm. against what it's up against. On top of that, as well, its mechanics are very board kind yeah. of situation yeah, with the mechanics. Absolutely. You, you don't really think, oh, I'm going to main board something specifically against lands, like no, from the loam no, or anything like that. People don't do that, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, um,. I, I, I tend to think, at least in my experience, that, you know, the longer the game goes on, the more favored the lands deck becomes, because it yeah. just, it's, it starts to have access to some really powerful lines and a lot of recursion, um, and, you know, it can start doing uh, things with Punishing Fire if uh, Ethan's deck is running that, and, you know, it's it, it just, it becomes incredibly powerful just as things keep going, and Jeffrey may not necessarily have things in particular to, you know, answer the lands or maybe what's going on with the graveyard recursion. Um, going up against lands is pretty much like Tetris. Okay, I like that. It's, you, you kind of... And what card is that? So... It is a creature. I'm not too sure. Alright, well we yeah. are going to get deck lists. Hopefully. At some point. I was promised deck lists. I'm so, making sure we're getting deck lists. Yes. Um, cause that's certainly going to help, but in the meantime, it looks like, uh, Jeffrey's got a creature in play. So, uh, this is... And a ghost quarter. Oh, wow. Right, so, uh, got access to a fair bit of land disruption here. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine Jeffrey running a lot of basics, so the ghost quarter itself is probably going to be quite fun. Aside from, you know, the Wasteland, which is also in play. And, you know, he's kind of got a mox. So, you know, being able to just blow a bunch of stuff. Like, he's, he's willing to trade his lands for uh, Jeffrey's lands. Because, you know, there's that kind of artifact. Which yeah. sort of makes up for uh, <coughs> trading one for one on your lands. Yeah, I think that's sort of the entire reason why you can't really run lands without mox diamond. Is yes. Simply yeah. because it provides you those options... On top of all the land destruction. Alright, and Jeffrey... Brainstorms. Up, uh, looks like a Baleful Strix, and I think I saw a Force of Will. Yep. Having... And a Fatal Push. I don't think the Fatal Push is going to be doing anything in this matchup. No. I guess that's why he topped it. Yeah. Now, uh... Yeah. Passes the turn. Ah, uh, here we go. we got deck lists. Jeffrey. Fantastic. Alright, right, cool. So... Yep, this is a very, 
very lands deck. Yep. So, Jeffrey, uh, for creatures, uh, in terms of pressure, he's looking at uh, Baleful Strix, uh, Eureka the Tiger's Shadow, which I will have to look up. I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, two Gurmag Anglers, uh, three Spell Slayer Sprites, uh, three Delverous Secrets. So I have to imagine would have been a lot happier having one of those in play earlier than right now. A uh, Moth Dust Changeling, Ninja of the Deep Hours, which is like wonderful. I love that card. Um, and yeah, so probably not able to generate the sort of early pressure uh, that I think he's going to need for this matchup. Uh, looks really, you know, lo looks set up for the Delver plan, you know, where it's like dealing with creatures, dealing with instants, dealing with sorceries, not necessarily dealing with a bunch of lands that mess up his game plan. Yeah, on Ethan's side here, it kind of seems like a mix between Maverick and Dark Depths. Yep. Because there's uh, a few Vampire Hex Mages and Dark Confidants in here. Mm hmm And uh, three Sylvan safe Safekeepers. So he does have a few creatures that basically generate some sort of help with either his lands or yep. card draw. And um, yeah, it's looking... One life from the loam. Surprising. Okay. So, I guess it's more of with the two Sylvan Scryings. Wow, this is kind of a nice, interesting little mashup of mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. a few and, different uh, decks. Looking at Eureka the Tiger Shadow, which uh, Jeffrey is playing four of them. Uh, so, it is a legendary creature, Human Ninja. Uh, whenever a ninja you control deals combat damage to a player, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. Each opponent loses life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Um, so you know, kind of a, kind of a, glint sleeve siphoner sort of effect. Okay. Um, which was a standard card. Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably not going to make the cut for Legacy. Um, now what I am noticing is is it doesn't look like uh, Jeffrey has too many ways to deal uh, with a with the Dark Depths plan. So I have, I have to think that's probably what Ethan is going to be going for here. Yeah. So, right now it seems like they're pretty... pretty evenly placed for board state. Jeffrey does have the creature on board, but they yep. kind of swapped a few lands out with their wastelands. Uh, now, Jeffrey does have access to three copies of Far and Away. Uh, which both good against the Merit Lage tokens, uh, far being a two mana return creature to its owner's hand, and away being the three mana target player sacrifices a creature. So um, three of those actually will be relatively okay with uh, dealing with you know the Merit Lage plan. Uh, the problem is that again that's going to end up getting recycled a bunch of times with you know so you can deal with one Merit Lage token, but can you deal with one the next turn, and the next turn, and the next turn? And and I imagine that, you know, based on this kind of start, that that's probably where this game is going to end up. Well, it looks like right now Ethan's actually set up for uh, Merit Lage coming mm -hmm. into play next turn. That is the, uh, the Hex Mage in play, correct? Yep. Yeah. So, and the Spell Stutter Sprite just hit the table. So... That'll deal with the Hex Mage, so... Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey's still in it. Yeah, wow. So, hmm. This looks like it's going to be an interesting... I guess Jeffrey's just aiming to try and get as much damage in, in as he can. Yeah, and I mean, he does have some pressure on the board. Like, it's it's not a lot, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a clock, and uh, dealing with the Hex Mage is... Uh, is, is certainly, you know, like, a step in the right direction as far as stopping Ethan from, from doing his thing. So, you know, with, with the three power on the board, um, it's, it, it, it's not the worst clock. Yeah. So, it looks like uh, Ethan's deck, though, he's only running one Assassin's Trophy main board. Oh, and... Yep. That's going to get Force of Wild. <laughs> that was... I guess it's better to choose the two cards that you want. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's just like the moral victory, you know? Yeah. Like, you're not going to make me discard two cards. I'm going to use two cards. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and Jeffrey's going to get in for three. 
Oh, oh ninjutsu. Nice. So, so I think that is the uh, Yuriko, yep. the Tiger Shadow. So that's actually going to be be fairly powerful um, in the sense that, you know, it's going to draw Jeffrey some cards, but certainly if Jeffrey can set up a situation where he can put a Gurma on the library, like that trigger is going to going to generate uh, a lot seven? of damage yeah grandma gangler i believe is seven it's a lot it's enough yeah. to know that you don't play it with like dark confidant because it's <laughs> it's too much you know yeah. and like you can't hit it with with fatal push so you know they, 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 there's kind of like two types of cards like those under four cmc and those that are more and uh grandma gangler definitely on the more side and uh it looks like jeffrey also has far and away in hand uh so he does maybe have... maybe not in a bad position at all. You know, it's it's entirely possible that uh, I misjudged this matchup, or maybe Jeffrey's just uh, played it really well because I I'm I quite like his position from here. Yeah, that's it's looking pretty powerful. Oh, hoping to hit the Gurmag off the brainstorm. Is that that is that is the oh, Gurmag? There you He's go. doing it. So yeah. so Ethan <laughs> might. I think Ethan's just dead. Yeah, actually. So. This is great. I yeah. love this interaction. <laughs> Just bam. Take a bunch. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So now comes the sideboarding. I wonder how this is going to play here. Because Ethan has two Lilianas of the Last Hope. And a Toxic Deluge. Uh, Jeffrey also having uh, two Lilianas of the Last Hope, which I can't imagine gets brought in here. Um, I think Toxic Deluge is going to be great for Ethan. I, yep. I, I think that's solid. The Assassin's Trophy is uh, probably quite reasonable. Yeah. Um, what about Bitter Blossom? You think he wants access to Bitter Blossom? Um, I would think so. Okay. I think... I, I don't... I'm not too sure because it does provide that extra blocker. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it can stall the game out a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I do have to imagine Jeffrey is probably cutting some number of, you know, his fatal pushes. Um, I mean, wants to be able to deal with a hex mage, but at the same time, I, I think, you know, doesn't want to have a bunch of fatal pushes against the deck that's doing land things, right? Yeah. Um, other than that, I think, I think that looks more or less what he's going to be bringing in. Uh, now what about Jeffrey? Uh, Jeffrey has one Consigned to Oblivion, two Flusterstorm, one Thoughtseize, one Unmask, one Diabolic Edict, one Vendillion Click, uh, one Pything Needle, two Bitter Blossom, two Liliana, two Liliana the Last Hope, one Surgical Extraction, uh, one Dread of Night, and one Engineered Explosives. Um, I see a few things uh, that I think I like that Jeffrey's going to bring in, and I, th I, I think the matchup Surgical. maybe becomes a lot better. I think Surgical's great. Yep. Um, Vendillion Click is also quite reasonable in, yeah. in terms of, you know, uh, just... Stalling the other player out. Well, and yeah, take whatever is good in your hand and draw something else. Yeah. Um, Diabolic Edict, probably not interested in. Um, same thing, Unmask, maybe not. Um, I don't think he wants the Bitter Blossoms. Um, what about Pything Needle? That's an interesting one, because that can shut down Wastelands. Yeah, sh sh shuts down Wastelands, uh, potentially deals with Liliana Last Hope. Um, uh, it's kind of tricky, because Ethan didn't actually play the uh, stage. Hmm. I didn't see that played, and no. it doesn't look like he actually... He has four in, four in the deck. Okay. So maybe he was just hoping to drop that after his... Uh, draw that after his Vampire Hex Mage. Yeah. But... Uh, and I mean, I, I, I think Jeffrey has to be suspecting that, you know, he's got Thespian Stage in his deck, yeah. right? Like, you're, you're, you're not playing Dark Depths and... and no you know, Thespian Stage. Yeah, it's, it's just... It's not a thing. Um... So, yeah, that that would also be shut down by Pithing, Pithing Needle, so... Okay. That yeah. He may bring those in. It's just difficult, because you're not too sure if you want to... Because Ethan's not playing a very Turbo Depth style deck. It's more... Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a lot grindier and, and a lot more interaction. Um, so if you hit a Pithing Needle in the opening hand, it's... It can kind, kind of be difficult to decide what you want to name with it, especially if you only have the one... Yeah, absolutely. 
So well, I, and you know what? I like I said, I'm I'm just curious to see how this plays out because again, uh, my experience uh, comes comes from just the race race the lands deck side. Yeah, and uh, I I was really quite impressed um, with how Jeffrey was able to navigate his way through that. You know, it uh, disrupted the relevant things, kept the you know hex mage off the table, and kind of got there. Yeah. With the you know three power on board, mind you, that flipped a Germa Gangler, which is <laughs> which was glorious. Yeah, that was a really <clears throat> good setup there. Now it does look like Jeffrey is going to send his hand back and take a mulligan. I uh, didn't see what he drew, um, but clearly not happy with it. And it does look like Ethan, Ethan, I think is yeah, on he, seven there. Yeah, he kept the seven. Okay. I guess Jeffrey, because he's on the draw as well, it doesn't hurt to try and go for a more optimal hand. Sure, and and I I think I think he's really looking for specific cards over you know like quantity of cards maybe. Yeah. Um, that, now he does go in hand, so and a thought sees, so he can have a pretty okay opening. Yep. Well, and especially against uh, land go, so he he's he's going to get to deploy that uh, that thought sees. Not get turn one him to get. <laughs> yeah, jeez, recovering from that. Yep. Uh, I, I, I imagine you have to feel that if, if you go like turn one mox land him on the plate, like you have to feel like you've just already won. You know, like yeah. that's 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 so good. Yeah. So I'm at two mana. You lose two cards randomly. Oh, and here comes the thoughtsies. So let's see what Ethan gets. You can see either. now. In interestingly, like Ethan could just have mostly lands. Like Thoughtseize, yeah. unfortunately, you know, misses some of the key cards in Ethan's deck, being you know the lands, like the the dark depths and, yeah. and the stages. That's that's one sort of issue with thought hand disruption cards like Thoughtseize, Cabal mm -hmm. Therapy, and the likes. Is it? Ooh, ooh, is that a crop rotation? Yeah, that's a crop rotation. Crop rotation, Liliana. Hex Mage. <laughs> this is a great hand. I yeah. I can see why he kept it. It's a little, little soft to you know getting thought seized. Yeah. Um, I imagine Jeffrey's gonna have some trouble trying to decide where to go. What does he take? I think right now actually probably his best bet would be the crop rotation. I think so too because I think I think if he takes the crop rotation, mind you, does he have a force of will in hand? He. So I mean, he he can. He has a brainstorm. Oh, it's a brainstorm. Okay, and so I think a no ponder. So he can not necessarily answer the crop rotation. Yeah, so I, I I think he probably takes the crop rotation. Oh, oh, he takes the Liliana. Interesting. All right. Yeah. That's uh quite the choice. Let's see if it works out for him in the end. Yeah. So I mean, he's he's definitely thinking he's going to be able to uh, answer that crop rotation. So. It could be a bluff, too. Yeah. Oh, he drew a Force of Will, so he now he can answer. Yeah, yep, so there, 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 there you go. All right. So, you know, based on the texture of Ethan's hand, I, I like Jeffrey's position here. I think it's actually, uh, you know, he, he has a few answers for the things that we know Ethan has in hand. Um, Baleful Strix. Yeah. So he keeps the Delver. I'm thinking he's keeping the Delver. I I have to assume. It's kind of tricky because he only has he has the fetch lands. Mm-hmm. So in order to actually play the Delver right now, he'd have to. Yeah, he would have to shuffle away. So eh. So. And you know that would be why people refer to it as such a skill testing card like i i have trouble with serum visions for god's sakes you know <laughs> like yeah you get to brainstorm put stuff back like brainstorm is such an amazing but mm -hmm. such a tricky card to master yeah there's there, there, there's a lot of lines with it yeah because again if, if if he wasn't gonna fetch then absolutely you can get the delver in play and flipped um 
So there's, there's definitely a lot of lines to be looking at. So maybe he might go for the gamble here and just hope that he tops something good. I think he's doing it. Yep. Nice. All right. That does add some pressure. Because if that flips, he's swinging in. He's doing great if that flips. Yeah. Let's see how... And Wait, you know what? I mean, I, I, I think I like that line. Like, he's... Oh. I want to say he's pretty confident that he's not just dead, but... Well, he still has the Force of Will, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so... Shields are up a little bit. He can't... Ethan can't crop rotation a Dark Depths into play and stage it this mm. turn. Yeah, so... So, there's... Jeffrey does have a turn to go. And we are... I want to say that's the Sylvan Safekeeper. I think it's Sylvan Scrying. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it's promo version, which would explain uh, not recognizing the art. But, I mean... Sylvan Scrying certainly makes sense to play here. Yeah. And, and I think I think that's that's a very strong yeah, so there's there's the depth. So so that's a really strong line from Ethan, because you know, the Sylvan Scrying gets the depths, and yeah. you know, we know that he still has access to the crop rotation as well, so it's it's kind of at a point where one force of will just obviously doesn't do it anymore, right? Yeah. Does he get? Can't quite see it here. He reveals it. Surgical. Surgical. Oh, okay. Ooh. Surgical is pretty. That means a lot. Because <laughs> with the Thespian stage and Dark Depths hitting the graveyard. Yep. And I mean, if 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 he surgical, like you can't get your Dark Depths sur surgical. Like that happens, then you know a lot of your deck just doesn't do anything. Anymore. Yeah. So, flips, and I think he's going to try and play that ponder. What's the CMC on Eureka? Eureka? Uh, Eureka. The oh, Tiger three. Shadow. Three. Yeah. Okay. Because he, he can play that this turn, then. And you know, I like I have to say that is a card I did not know existed twenty minutes ago. <laughs> and after that Gurmog Anger thing, it might be my new favorite card. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so he has a bitter blossom, a baleful strix, and a swamp on top. Is that a bit No, that's another keeps. that's another Eureka. I I kind of feel like I'm not really excited about any of those. Yeah. I feel like that's probably a shuffle, but he he might want to try and do a, a little bit of extra damage with Yuriko. Because mm -hmm. I think her ninjutsu cost. And was that the Bitter Blossom? I think so, yeah. Okay. Well, that also is... Merit Lage is indestructible, to, but she doesn't have Trample, does she? No, as yes. far as I know. So I, yeah, I guess I guess the Bitter Blossom keeps keeps Merit Lage from doing a lot yeah. or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so Ethan drops draws a Mox Diamond off the top, and he's having an excellent draw on turn four. Yeah, <laughs> right, right on time. <laughs> It's it's a really good card to have in your opening hand, but it kind of feels a little wasted after a while, especially yep. if you drop all your lands early game. Yep. <laughs> now, I do think Ethan is at 15. We've uh, kind of lost our overlay at the moment. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. so there's, there's the depths. <laughs> Ethan... This is actually really good for Jeffrey because if Ethan wants to get Merit Lage out, he knows that he's up against a surgical. Yeah. And if Merit Lage can't move past the tokens. Yeah, if, if you've only got one Merit Lage that you can do, um, 
I, I, I think Jeffrey can absolutely manage that. Yeah. So it looks like Jeffrey's still in favorite right now. Mm-hmm. I wonder how Ethan's going <laughs> to... The Monks. Monks Diamond. <laughs> it's... Pitches a bayou. Mm-hmm. Ethan has to make some tough choices right now. Yeah, I like I said, I, I think based on how these games have gone out, I I think I really misjudged the matchup. I think uh, Jeffrey has a lot more ways to deal with this than than I expected. You know, yeah. the uh, the surgical is great here. The bitter blossom kind of stops the token from doing anything, um, and you know he's he's got a delver putting a clock on, so it's yeah. kind of. Kind of exactly where the Delver deck wants to be, where, you know, you've stopped your opponent from doing anything, and while your opponent's trying to figure that out, they're going to be taking three a turn. Yeah. That's, uh... That, he, he adds a lot of pressure really quickly. Mm-hmm. So, his, his main swinger right there, the Delver, it's really helpful to have. I can see why he kept the hand that he did. Hmm. Well, Ethan's still trying to decide what to do. That's an assassin's trophy. Mm-hmm. So, is he going to run with that? I think Ethan's quite aware that, you know, all his options are kind of bad here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> wow. He's really deliberating on that. I think he's going for the trophy. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's a... Uh... Golgari Charm, hitting oh. a Bitter Blossom. Force of Will. Okay. There Which goes is, Eureka. Yep. Which he knows he has another one coming up. Yep. And Ethan's kind of, he ran his last option pretty much. Yeah. Because, yeah, he's, he's sitting on the crop rotation, which, uh, looking at the deck list, I don't think that does anything. No, um, it's mostly grab other lands. Yeah, I mean, he can, he can find a ghost quarter. That doesn't that doesn't do anything. Um, yeah. That's... Um, well, we're up... The Bitter Blossom tokens are, are black, correct? Yep. So... He does have access to Sejiri Steep, uh, which, if I recall correctly, that is the land where, uh, when it comes into play, you give a creature protection from the color of your choice, which, I mean, it's it's kind of all in, because yeah. if he goes for the Merit Lage, um, he, he knows that stuff is getting surgical. Yeah. Um, but that might be the only line he has available, is, is, you know, like, hope to crack him with the Merit Lage, and hope that it's good enough on one hit. Um, I think it won't be. You know, it's 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 a line. I don't think it's necessarily a good line. Um, but I'm I'm not too sure what else Ethan can actually do here. Well, I think Ethan would be probably in his best position to crack the the dark depths right now. Because mm -hmm. if he can, if he does that and blocks the. Uh, insect token, the insect, uh, that really limits Jeffrey in his ability to block against the Sejiri step. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, you know, it's pretty much an all or nothing kind of situation right now, though, because if it's, he it's, does... It's kind of what he has available to him, though, right? So yeah. I, I, I agree with that. Um, you have to wait and see how Ethan decides to play this, but I think that would be his best option. Mm-hmm. I tend to agree, and I mean, oh. the caveat being, I don't play lands, so yeah. I mean, that, that, that may be quite wrong. Oh, and he... Yep, ninjitsus. ninjitsus. So, that's... Yeah, it's a swamp. Take zero. Yep. A little bit less impressive than the Gurmog Angler. Yeah. But, it it's a card. So, I mean... Well, he's, he's got another Delver, so... Uh, the pressure's, pressure's piling up. Yeah.
I guess Ethan's also kind of worried that he might see a... What was the split card that our friend had there? The Far and Away? Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, I, I, I imagine if he goes for the one and only Merit Lage token he can do, um, he, he just can't beat Far and Away. <laughs> yeah. So... This... He does have a blocker against Eureka now. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of he actually... Oh, is he? He's doing it. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to see that Mary Lage token. Yep. <laughs> Phones. Yep. <laughs> when you pick the weird, obnoxious ringtone, because you're like, oh, it's so weird and obnoxious. And then... <laughs> And then everybody hears it, and you go, eh, yeah, yeah, All I right, did that. so it's up to Jeffrey now to figure out exactly how he's going to handle this token. I'm hoping... Oh, he's still not sure if he's going to reveal his card or not. Wow. So, no, he doesn't reveal it. Okay. He gets two tokens now, so he has more blockers up. And, and what was that? Was it a, uh, was it another force? It no, was it was Piving, Piving Needle. Piving Needle? I wonder what he's going to choose. Because, unfortunately, he didn't... Jeffrey didn't opt to use the surgical extraction. Yeah. When he could have and got... There's another Dark Depths in play, so... <laughs> yep. Ethan is actually doing pretty well right now. Because there's that redundancy there. And it looks uh, like he's... You think we're... Well, he has things that can block the token anyways if he goes for Sejiri's step. Maybe, though. Let's yeah, see it. Because I think... Yeah, if he gives a protection from black, then he's swinging in. Let's see. And he does go for it. Yep, yeah, so there it is. Let's... Now it's up to Jeffrey to decide if he's... Oh, and he scoops up. Yep, there it is. <laughs> so these guys are going to game three now. I was a bit surprised. I felt like Jeffrey had a pretty good advantage there. No, I, um... I, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll have to ask about that, because cause it felt... Felt like he was pretty in control, but then, you know, Merit Lage, Sejiri step, and yeah, there you go. So, I don't know. I think he probably could have capitalized on the... Uh, capitalized on the... Uh, the surgical extraction he had. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious why he didn't do that. Because if you, you can't really have more than one Dark Depths in play, and surgical extraction can't remove it from play, but it can remove it from the hand and from the deck. Yeah. So, let's see. Did Ethan put the stage into Graveyard last turn when he copied Depths? Or was it too strange? He actually used a... Um, Sight... Sick... Taho? He actually used a uh, Vampire Hex Mage on his Dark Depths. So there was just the one stage in play. So... So I think, yeah, Sur Surgical would have been a line that he had access to there. Yeah, and especially since it would effectively still be free, he would pay the life, but yep. when you're up against a, uh, a lands deck like this, you are you don't really worry about your life total because they're usually swinging for more than 20 yep, or absolutely. 20 on the button on anyway. anyway. And I mean, I, I, I would like to say I'm, I'm definitely 0 for 2 for understanding this matchup, you know. <laughs> Game 1, I'm like, oh... Jeffrey's toast and he wins and yeah. game two, Jeffrey can't possibly lose, he loses. So uh let's see what happens game three. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, he actually, it was kind of tricky to, to pay attention to right away. He actually just uh, popped his Hex Mage to get that in. Um, I didn't notice it at first that he also had an additional Dark Depths in his hand. So I think he really added some level of redundancy there by using the Hex Mage mm -hmm. in that part because he would still have the mana for the uh, stage. All right, so Next Ethan's turn. got a, uh, he's got Bob, he's got Liliana. Liliana Last Hope. Wasteland, Bayou, I think that might be an Urborg. Yeah, dark... so I mean, it's, it's oh, no, reasonably that's decent catacombs. hand. And a Dark Depths in hand. Oh, and he starts at the bottom. Yep. So Jeffrey opens up with a Fetch Cracking, grabs a basic, which think might make Ethan a little bit sour there with his wasteland. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, what's going to be really unfortunate for Ethan is if, you know, he gets a flip Delver in play, yeah. and uh, then, you know, you're looking at Lily last which, you know, it, it's okay, because it still turns it into, like, a flying 1-1, one -one, but it, it, it feels so great when you can tip up and just kill a creature every turn, as well as put loyalty on, and and uh, that that card definitely has the potential to be extremely. It's gonna have to get through a force of will before it can do anything. Yeah. And I think that is a ninja of the deep hours as well. So Jeffrey's Jeffrey's hand actually looking uh, looking pretty decent. Yeah. Ethan kind of really relying on uh, either that dark confidant to draw into some action, or that uh, Lily last hope to resolve. Yeah. I mean, Ethan does have some of the key pieces that he needs. Yep. The Dark Depths. Yeah, but Jeff Jeffrey's hand looks great here. Yeah. I guess it looks... If Jeffrey can keep the momentum up, it looks like it's going to be in his favor. Mm-hmm. Which, of course, now that we've called Jeffrey as a favorite, means Ethan's going to win. Um, <laughs> it's how it goes. Yeah. Wow. Two... Two of his uh, Delvers on the bottom there. Hmm. I guess it's good that he fetched when he did. So it looks like he Jeffrey's gonna probably try and open up with the Eureka. No, that's not Eureka. No, but I he think... has it in hand. Oh yes. So um in fact if Ethan doesn't play his Dark Confidant right now. That's going to connect, and mm -hmm. that really. Will speed I mean, it, up the it, game. it might connect anyways. Like you, you're generally not playing your Dark Confidant to block with it. Yeah. You know, um, of course, you know, Ninjutsu has to be on the mind for Ethan. So it, it it'll be interesting to see what he does here, or you know, if Dark Confidant is necessarily even the play. Yeah. Well, Jeffrey also has a wasteland in his hand, so. <coughs> and it looks like the confidant's coming down. Yep, yep, there you go. There's Bob. Now, like I said, I, I would be willing to bet he doesn't block with it. Yeah, there's just so many cards that he's looking forward to right now that. Yeah. The confidant can really help bolster. Yep, and I mean, if if if. You know, <laughs> Jeffrey to start two for wanting himself with Force of Will as well. You're also drawing a card a turn like it. Uh, oh, yeah. Which you know to me seems correct. I I, I think uh, in the absence of you know a pretty fast clock, um, I think Bob could run away with this game. Yep. And I think Jeffrey does have a pretty good position. Yep, and he ninjutsu's Eureka. And... There's Eureka, yeah. My new favorite card. Yeah. And <laughs> Grimo Gangle! <laughs> <laughs> that That's was never going to get old. I, wow. I hope Jeffrey goes all the way and we get yeah. to watch that all day long. That was... <laughs> that, that, that must sting. Yeah. Especially since there was no deck fixing there. Just, you know, casual Grimo Angler flip. Yep. Wow. Down to 12. <laughs> so if Jeffrey 
Oh, yep. Assassin's Trophy. No, I don't think that was the trophy. That might have been... Uh, Abrupt Decay? Yeah, or possibly one of the edicts or something like that. So, I didn't quite see. It looks like he top deck a Pithing Needle, which might have a certain advantage here. Yeah, it might be reasonable. Yep. It's not sure if he wants to play it right away. He does have the Gurmag in hand, so it looks like he's going to go for that. Which I, I think is great. I mean, Ethan doesn't have anything really going on at the moment. Yep. Um, so, you know, just here's my 5-5 five five is... Uh, it, it, it's pretty good, and that's that, that's going to end this game in three hits. Yeah. Uh, if Ethan's not able to do anything about it. And, I mean, we know there's Liliana Last Hope, which doesn't do anything here. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I like the Grimog Angler there. The problem is, is that Ethan right now, he's looking at a Sylvan Library in hand, which is kind of a tricky card to play with when your life totals at 12 and you have two, you have a Gurmag Angler. Yep. Uh, he has to do a lot of very hefty card filtering at this point, and hopefully he probably draws a fetch and can shuffle up what he doesn't need. Yeah, but it's a... Uh, it's a gamble. Yeah, Je Jeffrey once again finding himself in a pretty good spot, kind of a commanding position, I would say, at this point. And is he going to play the Strix, or is he just going to swing in? I think he's, he's going to swing. Yep. yep. And he's got the, the far and away in hand. So it's um, six yeah. damage. That's one more turn. Yep. And, and that really limits Ethan's options with the Sylvan Library now. So. And you know what? If, if he gets somehow... Gets a merit Lage in play, like there's far and away in hand anyways. I, I don't I don't know that there's any line that necessarily gets in hand here. Uh he's looking at the three cards there. I, I see a thought see or is that a toxic deluge? Bitter blossom. I think it's a thought seize. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thought seize. Which uh not not doing anything here. Yeah, it drops a Liliana. Yep. That will buy him a turn. Yeah, but I mean, so he put back what the Thoughtseize? So he knows he's yep. drawing Thoughtseize next turn. So he's he's kind of just dead. Yeah. So he buys himself the one extra turn here because he'll be at one next turn with a Thoughtseize. I yeah. mean, yeah. yeah. It's, he might draw something good off the top for you there. He's really digging for an answer right now. Yeah. I mean, his one. There's a lot of outs that he still has. Um, crop rotation. Yeah. Sylvan scrying. Well, the thing with crop rotation is if he crop rotates into a merit lane, he gets far and away. Yeah. So it's. Uh, He's really looking for specific outs. And a bob. <laughs> yeah. That. I mean, that kind of puts a blocker up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so he takes a bob. I mean, what 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 else is he gonna do? Which is fair. Crop oh, rotation, okay. okay. Yeah. So I, I I think I let this resolve, and I'm far away. I think that's a token. Oh no, that's the Sylvan Safekeeper. Oh yeah. So he does have a blocker, but Jeffrey can just bounce it. Yeah, if he really feels like he can close it next turn. Oh! Uh, apparently we're having sound issues, so our uh, one little sound guy is going to get on that for us. Hopefully. Ethan just dropped a bob. <coughs> wow, okay. So, that's a kind of a hefty gamble there. Yeah. Um... Well, the uh, Summon Library triggers before Bob, right? Or no? Um, no, because that's on draw, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll keep that. I'm surprised. I would have let the Bob sit there. I would have too, but I'm bad. You know? <laughs> so, like, like I, I will sometimes go for the fun win over, over the, the, the sure thing win. And yeah. I, I think forcing Ethan to kind of... Yeah. Okay. 
mean, when you dark depths like that right now, it's kind of yeah, kind of a tough tough call to really feel like you have a sure win. Swings at home. Well, I mean, we're sitting here at one life, so if you wanted excitement, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> Round one. 